Today we're going to show you guys the ultimate guide to slow motion for your music videos. We're going to be covering every single method to get slow motion, whether that's shooting in slow motion on your actual camera or taking footage that isn't meant to be in slow motion, but using some cool saucy plugins to make them slow motion. And basically all the methods that I know to turn footage into slow motion and how to use it effectively in your music videos. Now, I highly recommend you guys watch this video to the very end because there is going to be a bunch of methods and sauce in this that you can use in your edits. You do not want to miss this video. It's honestly so jam packed with a ton of information. But before we hop into this, I got to let you guys know about my brand new deal that I have going on for Fast Effects. If you guys are looking to grab Fast Effects, you can get two additional editing packs for completely free. Fast Effects is my Premiere Pro plugin that allows you to add hits, shakes, wipes, and a ton of other transitions instantly inside of Premiere Pro. I built it for music video editors just like us. So if you're looking to grab that, it'll be linked down below. Go grab your two packs for completely free, but let's hop right into this. So before we get into Premiere Pro right here and show you all the methods and break everything down, I just want to do a little kind of lecture. It'll, it, it, it's not boring, but you really need to know this before we dive into slow motion. So when it comes to uh, cameras here, that's a terrible drawing of a camera. When it comes to, oh my God, when it comes to cameras here, let's just say this is the camera. Um, there's a couple different recording modes and it really comes down to uh, FPS here. So that's frames per second. So when I shoot music videos, I typically like to shoot in 60 frames per second, right? Uh, the average movie is shot in 24 frames per second. I'm not sure if you guys have seen some really old movies, but the slow motion in the really old movies, you know how it's like really choppy and like kind of corny? That's because they shoot them in 24 FPS. And if you slow down, 24 FPS footage, uh, which I'm going to show you right here. We take this uh, Ski Mask, the Slump God music video here. This is in uh, 20 FPS. If you slow down 20 FPS footage, let me just go ahead and delete the audio. Uh, we'll change it to 50% speed, right? So make it half the speed at 24 FPS. So it's going to be 12 FPS. Some quick math for you. Um, but if we turn this down, you guys can see it's super choppy and super jittery. And that's like how it would look in the old movies. Now, like I was saying, I film everything here in 60 FPS. So when I do change it to 50% speed, it is then 30 FPS, right? Which is pretty close to 24. And then I just set my timeline in my sequence up here. Uh, we'll set it to 24. I haven't done that yet, but you want to set your timeline to 24 FPS right here. And then when you export it, your video is going to be exported in 24 FPS and it will have that movie quality, but you'll still be able to slow down your scenes and get that nice looking slow motion. So this is a great example of it here. This is a music video scene for Killy that I shot recently. We'll go ahead and turn it down to 50% speed. And you guys can see we get that really clean slow motion here. So let me go ahead and break down a couple other things that are super, super important that I didn't really know about until I learned and I learned the really hard way. So there's something called shutter speed on your camera. I'm looking at it right now on my camera. It's in the bottom left corner on my Sony. And right now, since this is a tutorial, I'm filming the tutorial in 24 uh, FPS, right? And since the tutorial is in 24 FPS, you want to make sure your shutter is double your FPS. So the closest I can get to for that is one over 50. It'll say that in the bottom left of your camera. So if I'm shooting in 24 FPS, I want my shutter speed to be one over 50, right? If my FPS is at 60, right? my shutter speed needs to be one over uh, 120 or whatever, like the closest one to that is. It needs to be double this number. So if you're shooting in 120 uh, FPS, uh, let me just, <laughs> so bad. If you're shooting in 120 FPS, you need your shutter speed to be one over 240. And if you're shooting at 120 FPS and your shutter speed is one over uh, 150, if it's not double your FPS here, let's say it's like one over 150 or one over 120 here, it's not going to be slow motion. When you slow it down, it's going to look choppy, just like this footage. It's not going to work properly. You really need to lock that in and keep an eye on that. Maybe even create some like uh, profiles on your camera for when you do switch to 120 FPS, it automatically changes uh, your shutter. So do not forget about that. That's a little lesson I wanted to teach you guys here. And that's pretty much it for this lesson. So let's hop into the examples and different ways that you can get uh, slow motion on your footage uh, using free plugins, built in stuff, yada, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Let's explain and expose all the sauce here. So what I showed you guys earlier was me just right clicking on my clip, going down, going over to speed and duration and changing it to 50% speed, right? If you have a 60 FPS clip, which this one is here, uh, you just want to go down to, uh, where is it? Where's the info? I'm like, totally cannot see this right now. So I guess they removed that. I'm just going to go ahead and right click it on here. And it should, should say inside of here, media file properties. If you click on that and you go over to the frame right here, you can see this is 59.94 FPS right? So we can slow this down to 50% speed, which will then make it close to 30 FPS, right? But since our timeline is 24 FPS, we could technically slow it down to like 40% speed. And I'll show you a couple tricks to maybe even lower a little bit more with some built-in settings that will make it a lot smoother. So we changed it to 50% here. We can see the slow-mo is nice and smooth. Let me just unlink this 
right here because it's being really annoying, right? Slow-mo is nice and smooth. Um, it's buttery, right? But then if we go all the way down to, let's say, like 10, right? You can see it starts to get really, really choppy. Now, while this is choppy, let me show you guys a cool method here uh, that I've been using for years. If you right-click and go back to that uh, speed and duration section right here, you can then go down to time interpolation here and change this to optical flow. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to make the frames in between blend a lot better. And you can see when we play it through, it's still really bad. But like having something on optical flow... Um, if it's at like 30% makes like all the difference. Um, it obviously is still a little choppy, but it kind of blends the scenes a lot more. Let me show you it without optical flow, just with frame sampling. And then with optical flow, we'll just kind of smooth everything out. So like I said, if this is 60 FPS and your timeline is 24 FPS, uh, you could float around the 45% per, per, area and get some clean slow-mo. Now, what's slow-mo in a music video if you don't do speed ramping? I have a bunch of tutorials on that, but speed ramping is basically just pressing C on your keyboard, uh, cutting your clip where you want it to speed up, pressing V, right-clicking, going down to speed and duration, and we'll make this like 200 speed, hit enter, and then we'll zoom in. And we'll go a couple frames later and then we'll go ahead and turn this back down to 50 percent and if i play this you'll speed up and then it goes right back to slow-mo obviously that's a really bad example of it you want to do it faster and on certain moments of the beat but that's what i typically use slow-mo for now let me show you guys some methods that you can use on footage like the ski mask video that is 24 fps I downloaded it from YouTube. It's 24 frames per second. If I slow it down, it looks bad. If you're doing edits and downloading footage from the internet that's not 60 FPS, let me show you some methods that you guys can use to then slow this footage down and actually speed ramp with it and use it in slow motion. So there's a couple different ways to do this. There's a plugin that's paid. Obviously, I'm going to be showing you a free version as well uh, called Twixter. Um, so if you go ahead and just drag and drop it on your clips, uh, I do not pay for it. I have like this massive, yeah, <laughs> it goes orange. I have like this massive uh, watermark on it. Yeah, it doesn't even work in here. Maybe it works in After Effects. I'm not too sure. But Twixter is a paid plugin that basically uses frame interpolation to kind of blend the frames in between and slow down your footage to whatever speed you want. Uh, it works really, really well. I'd say um, Twixter is like 90 percent there it glitches every now and then like interpreting the frames but it's like 90 percent there so it is paid if you guys want to go over and check that out i'm not sponsored by them obviously i don't even have it <laughs> i don't pay for it or anything but um there is a free way to do it built into after effects that not a lot of people know about so let me show you guys how that one works so if you're in premiere pro uh you just want to right click on your clip uh go down maybe i went down too far uh and click replace with after effects composition and this is going to open After Effects for me and bring this clip inside of After Effects. If you didn't know this, I just put you on. You're welcome. Super, super saucy. But once you have your clip inside of here and we have our music video, I'm just going to go ahead and pick a scene that I want to like add it in. Let's do like this one in here. I'm going to press Command Shift D, which is going to cut it. And then I'll go to like here, Command Shift D. I'm going to zoom in, click on the clip that we want to isolate, right click on it, go down and hit Precompose. And we'll like open it all up, uh, adjust composition, open new composition, etc. We have this clip here on its own. I'll go ahead and play it through. Right? Uh, shit. Did I? I think I brought in. Uh, anyways, I brought in the the, the fifty percent slowed down choppy footage. But screw it. We'll just use Twixter on it. Uh, see how good it actually makes it look. Or not Twixter. Sorry, the free one. My bad. Uh, time warp. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and drag this on. You guys can see it's under time. Got time warp right here. Built into After Effects, I'm using After Effects 2025. I think they added it in 2024. But if you drag and drop it on here, um, it's going to move to a different part in the video for some reason. But as you can see here, it's smooth, right? Super, super smooth. And the cool thing about uh, Time Warp here is you can keyframe everything. So if I want it to be uh, like fast, I'll like bring it to 200. Obviously, that would make it like 100% speed if it's already at 50. So I'll bring it to 200. And then when it gets right here, uh, we can press U on our keyboard while clicking on this to bring up the rest of our keyframes here, as you can see. I'll add another keyframe and then I'll go over a couple of frames and then bring this to 50% speed. And if we play it through now, it's going to go from 200 and then slow right down to 50% speed and it will be a smooth slow motion. It may not look smooth right now. Uh, let me just try that one more time inside of here. I'm just going to go ahead and bring this uh, back to 100% speed. And now we'll bring it inside of the composition. And then just do the exact same thing that I just did. Let's do it on this clip right here. Same thing. Go over, pre-compose. Okay. And then we'll drag and drop time warp. You know what we could probably do? Um, if we go ahead and pre-compose this and then close these, 
right? And now we have it. Okay, cool. Now we have it as this. Uh, what that does is it's not going to take the information from the video before. You know how it like I put time warp on and it brought a different scene. So hopefully it doesn't do that now. Um, cool. And then we get it at 50% speed. See how smooth that is. Super, super smooth. Uh, we'll play it without the time warp, right? Obviously fast. And then with the time warp, 50%. Very, very smooth. I'm surprised. Oh, you can see a little bit of warping around his fingers here. It's not super noticeable, but like sometimes it'll add warpage like this if it's like a complicated scene because it's interpreting the frames and like making it slower. But like if I crank it to like 10% speed, uh, you might get a lot more of that warpage there, but it's still really, really slow as you can see here. That'll be super cool uh, for speed ramping. So we get that 10% speed. You can see the warping up here a little bit, but it's fine. But then like if we were to go to that scene in here, um, let's see if we could find it right here and change it to 10% speed right here, it's going to look completely different. Like this at 10% speed right here, you guys could see it's going to be a mess. Like see that, see how gross that is compared to uh, this free built-in feature inside of After Effects time warp. And like I was doing before, like if you do, if you want to go ahead and like set it to hundred, right? So it's playing like regular speed and then like press U on your keyboard again, set a keyframe, go over a couple of frames and set it to 10. Uh, you can get that slowed down effect like I was talking about earlier, right? See how it goes from normal to slow. And then we could set another keyframe, go a couple of frames, set another keyframe and bring it back to 100% speed here. So it'll slow down and then speed back up, right? And that's how you get that super, super slow motion. You could even set it lower if you wanted to at these points, like you'd probably do 1%. Just depends on the complexity of the scene. Like I was saying, like you can get a little bit of lag, but some scenes are like super, super laggy. And that's pretty much all my sauce for when it comes to slow motion. Like I was showing you guys Twixter before, but it just wasn't working. I don't use Twixter. It's a paid plugin. Um, yeah, see, we get like this, this cross on it here. So let me show you actually how it works now. Um, I don't have it activated. You have this big X on it, but you go down to your speed right here. I'll change it to 10% and you don't get a lot of those artifacts with Twixter. Twixter's, uh, surprisingly extremely smooth, but it seems like it's also very, very leggy because I've hit the space bar like 10 seconds ago and it's not playing our clip yet. I guess we'll wait a couple seconds. Anyways, so take my word for it. Uh, Twixter works. It just moved one frame in the span of 30 seconds. So I don't want to wait here. Um, obviously, most of the people watching this video who have a brain will just use the free uh, After Effects version. If you do have Twixter already or you're interested in it, it works very, very well. It's a little bit better than the After Effects one, but you, as you can see here, like it's 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 very smooth and doesn't have that lag if you're like, or like the glitches that I was talking about. So um, yeah, Twixter is fire. Yeah, you can see right there, boom. Slow motion can't really tell a crazy difference between Twixter and the After Effects one. Um, but for those really glitchy scenes where it can't really interpret the frames, Twixter is going to do it better. So if you're really fucking up and you have like a deadline, switch over to Twixter, pay it for it. But yeah, that's pretty much all my sauce when it comes to slow motion. Just do not forget about uh, the FPS with the shutter speed. You can even ask ChatGPT if you forget sometimes, just be like, yo, I want to shoot in 120 FPS. What should my shutter speed be? Uh, just remember double. But if you forget, just ask AI that or whatever the fuck. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are interested in grabbing my plug in Fast Effects and two other editing packs for free. Those will be linked down below. Go check it out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.